feel there are certain parallels between you know, our, 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 our journeys mm. of late. Yeah. Very fascinating as well, I thought. Well, I mean, I, we're, we're obviously playing two guys who sacrificed a lot for what they believe in and I think are heroes in the true sense, really. But how, because well, the question I get asked a lot is, did you do you feel the weight of it? Do you feel the pressure of it? I mean, how 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 do do you approach that? I had the same question for you. Uh, my answer to that would be, uh, it was you know, I, I I actually accepted that the role was perhaps you know so enormous that at times it felt beyond me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I guess I just had to live with that. Yeah. And that's that's part of the procedure, I guess. It would have been naive of me to consider myself capable. Right. The whole time and. And, but were there moments when you were doing it that you did feel this is beyond me, I don't know how I'm going to do it, and it wasn't until you were actually shooting? Because I, I know that I felt that yeah. playing Dr. King. There were literally moments I approached, I thought, don't quite know how I'm going to scale this mountain, but the call sheet says I'm doing it tomorrow, so I guess it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. what, were there moments like that for you? For sure. You know, like you're on that conveyor belt and it moves at its own pace, yeah. and you just got to keep up. So thankfully, Angie had a level of compassion mm. where she understood that. Mm. And so I guess for that reason, it kind of went unspoken a lot of the time. Wow. And then and then there's a theory of just whittling down the here and now, whatever's present, mm. concentrating on that. And But as soon as I focused on, you know, the wider picture, mm. it was kind of beast-like, you know? Yeah. Did Because I really feel like it happened at the right time with the right people. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how, how did that... How do you feel with, with your film? Incredibly fortunate that, you know, it had been handed down for 50 years. Wow. You know, I mean, there could have been two of, two of my lifetimes in, in that period of time, you know. Wow. There could have been two me's, potentially. Wow. In the running for that. So incredibly fortunate in yeah. that respect. But also I feel a slight grief in that, you know, the, the knock-on effect of that, the, the, the time it took to actually make. Mm. Uh, kind, of, kind of meant that Louis will never see the end product, right. tragically enough, you know, right. with his passion. And it was recent, year. wasn't it, that he passed away? Yeah. But I think she sh she got to show him some of it, I was some also reading. Apparently he appro um. approved of the run and my hair. <laughs> <laughs> no, no performance, no. Oh, sure. gosh. Well, the only good thing about Dr. King no longer being with us is that he's not here to comment on either my <laughs> run or my hair uh, in, the, in the movie. But mm -hmm. it's so funny. We have that exactly in common because it's 50 years ago that Selma happened. ...account. Mm. You know, I've got, you know I've, having seen what I was allowed to see, uh, David, I'm excited, man. Oh, thank you. you. Know, and I really, really uh, crucial. Thank you. Crucial. What were, what were the main adversities for you? What, what did you have to really unlock? And were there any, any, any particular traits of his or anything that you'd comprehend that, that took you where you needed to be? Uh, one of the things I, <coughs> I realised early on is that, of course, you know, with Dr King in particular, you have a very famous voice. Yeah. And you have a very famous visage, you know, his, 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 his look. Well, I think that's where I got lucky in that, you know, I, I, I kind of had to, you know, I was able to fill in the gaps with right. his voice and there was no real archive footage or, or you know, any, any audio right. of Louis. So, right. you know, I felt quite fortunate that I, I, I got yeah. to sort of fill in it, the gaps it, there. It, I've got to say, it helps when you don't have the pressure of people sort of knowing exactly what he... He sounds like, so to speak, um, but you know. So there were, in in a sense, superficial things that you have to nail, which is the voice and the look, and it involved a weight gain for me. I, I saw that you dropped quite a bit of weight for your film, as well. So there was a, a weight thing there. But for me, one of the the thing I hadn't accounted for is that I had to take a gamble, which is that I, the more I read about him, the more I watched footage of him and spoke to people mm -hmm. there is a spiritual side to him that I just had to engage with mm -hmm. um, and not just I don't just mean as, as him as a man of faith I mean 
in terms of the depth of guilt he felt for putting people in harm's way in order to show up racism, okay. um, th th being away from his kids so much. He, they say when he died, he had the heart of a man twice his age. So he had gone through so much pressure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so th the, the, the hardest thing and the thing that I felt was most important was to make myself spiritually available mm -hmm. to what that must feel mm -hmm. like. And if, you, if I get that right, I, I hoped people would forgive anything else. Well, I'd learned the distinction between uh, mimicking mm. and, and actually, you know, delivering. That's if, right. If you know what I mean. A hundred percent. And there's a lot more depth to... A hundred percent. And it's, you know, a lot harder to achieve. But what, but, but what I do think people engage with is the human spirit. And that's where the mimicry comes in. If, you're, if, it's, if it's an impersonation, Basically, there's a kind of a there's a there's a wall between you and the audience. If it's a uh, if it's an, an unveiling of the of the spirit of the human being, then I think people don't really mind how what they sounded like. What is how how like Louis am I? How like Dr. King would I do what Dr. King is doing right now? Would I do what Louis is doing? Uh, am I strong enough? You know, I truly think we go to the movies to see. A reflection of ourselves and that's our, our job I, I think. Uh -huh. I had to gain 30 pounds or what we would say back home about two and a half stone there about okay. yep. um, to, to, uh, to, to play Dr. King but I saw the footage they showed me of you quite a, a drop. There was somewhere you sort of looked healthy and then somewhere on the on the boat when you guys were adrift mm -hmm. you just looked emaciated. Mm -hmm. And that? the biggest challenge I guess was drawing the emaciation uh, the, the exertion mm. that was required in terms of energy and you know, I'm play, playing this phenomenal human being right. uh, who had this, this unreal stamina to him, almost superhuman. Mm. And so, you know, when you're feeling incredibly weak and tired and, mm. and drained, you know, you're dodging bullets and swimming for your life oh over and over again. Right. And that involved a lot of exercise without refueling. Mm. That was tedious. Mm. And then I had to go and put it back on again for the Olympian. Oh, yeah. that's right, that's right. That's what I saw in the clip. So, so we did the, the worst or the most hungry Louis first and then it was a case of, you know, trying to get strong again. But by that point, my stomach had shrank. Oh, yeah. So I couldn't really stomach anything. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Which is that's quite, kind of torturous, you know, because they're saying, finally, you can eat. Right. But I couldn't, yeah. physically. What kept you going? What, what I, I mean, in those I moments... I think the responsibility. What? Yeah. I, I think just the idea that as far as I knew it, I, I, I really, you know, fantasised the idea of him seeing it, first mm. and foremost, mm. along with his family, along with people that knew him. So I, I had a responsibility to do justice to that. Mm. And I guess the, the threat of failure mm. is what, you know, kept, kept me going. That keeps many an actor. Though, <laughs> I, would right say. I would say that's our fuel right I, I'd, there. I'd hoped I'd get over it. <laughs> point, it never it, goes it, away. <laughs> It never goes away. I did a job with Judy Dench and she confirmed the fact that it never goes away. She's lovely, so isn't she? She's wonderful. Yeah, bless really, her. What a babe. Really, really wonderful. What an absolute babe. I fancy yeah. her. You do? I do, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but for me, the, 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 weight, the weight gain, um, I mean, you know, people would always say, oh, that must be so great just to get to eat whatever you want. And I had to, like... 11 at night, that's the time to go hard. That's the time to get the lasagna, get the cake, get the ice cream. No one has any sympathy for you, by the way, when you, when you have to weight gain, particularly ladies. When you mm -hmm. say to them, oh, I really struggle to keep the weight on, literally, the eyes roll and they walk <laughs> away from me. So uh, I, think, I think they're going to prefer you to me on the, uh, on the weight front.